I'm excited to welcome UK-based developers Hamish Peebles and Matt Grogan, who will take us through an open, decentralized chat application that they've built on the internet computer. Earlier this year, there were concerns around WhatsApp's updated privacy policy. It required users to accept that their information will be shared with Facebook before continuing to use the app. This resulted in the privacy-focused messaging app Signal growing to become one of the most downloaded apps on both Android and iOS. Around the same time, Telegram saw a surge of 25 million new users from the App Store within a period of just 72 hours. Hamish and Matt will explain how developers can build apps with both the front end and the back end of the app hosted natively on the internet computer. Hello, I'm Hamish. I'm a software engineer. And for the past few months, I've been working alongside Matt on a new messaging service called OpenChat. OpenChat is very similar in terms of functionality to WhatsApp and Signal and Telegram and so on. But under the hood, it's very different. It runs on the internet computer as what's called an autonomous app. And this means that rather than being owned by a single entity, it instead is directed by those people who hold the governance tokens. They can vote on the changes that get proposed. So in our case, we will be distributing those governance tokens amongst the users. So essentially the users have final say on any changes that we or other people want to make to this service. The code will all be public. So anyone can take a look at it and suggest changes. They can even make changes themselves, which would be nice. But of course, any changes that would negatively affect users. So for example, if someone proposed a change which tracked user activity or could somehow read user messages, the users simply wouldn't vote it through. And so that change wouldn't get accepted. This doesn't mean that your average user is going to need to look at the code though. How it works is with the voting, you can opt for your voting weight to simply follow someone else who you trust votes. So, you could follow me if you wanted, or anyone who you think would be acting in the best interest for you and the open chat service. It's open to the people and it's run by the people. Hi, I'm Matt and I'm going to show you open chat. We don't have much time, so I'm just going to show you the basic functionality. Hamish and I started developing the app three months ago, so it's still early days and there are plenty of features on our roadmap, so do bear with us. I'm going to start by pasting uh, the URL into Chrome, the, the open chat URL into Chrome. As you can see at the moment, it's not a very friendly URL. This will become a, you know, this will be a domain name in, in time. Uh, the first thing you must do is sign in with the internet computer. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, this is redirecting me to an identity provider hosted on the IC. I'm going to create a profile. I'm going to use my USB security key. I could use a password or a fingerprint sensor. Just do that. Just press my security key. And don't worry about the contents of this. This is basically saying that I'm giving access, granting this user access to open chat. And finish. It's now redirecting back to the open chat app. And I now need to register. I'm just gonna pick some name. Go ahead and register. This will take a few seconds. Okay, I'm just going to, firstly, I'm just going to give myself a profile image. And I'm going to start a new chat. I'm going to find an existing user. So, hello. So this message is being sent via the IC, uh, an open chat canister. And um, we'll just wait for a tick. So that tick means that it's been received by the internet computer. I'm just now going to make this window a bit smaller and um, bring in off screen. I've got another window with Alice's. Uh, sorry, this is yeah. This is this is a, another browser with um, and there's another session with um, signed in as user Alice. Uh, I can have 
with Chrome, Chrome you can use Safari and Firefox, etc. You can have different sessions at the moment, so it's allowing me to do this demo. Um, so you can see that Alice has received a message from Matt Grogan, um, and she's going to say hello to you. And as you can see, I received that straight away, and again, whatever. And as I as Alice is typing, you can see that on Matt's window, you can see that Alice is typing. And likewise, as Matt's typing, you can see on Alice's window that, that Matt's typing. Um, so the, the, these instantaneous messages and these typing notifications are being sent via a peer-to-peer, so uh, via so peer-to-peer via web RT, or using WebRTC. Um, the WebRTC connections are, are brokered using uh, the open chat canisters hosted on the IC, so it's not using uh, legacy IT servers to do this. Um, now, let me just send an image of a dog. Now, at the moment, just yeah, just text messages are being sent by WebRTC, so images take a bit longer. Um, so let's wait for a notification. There we go. Uh, um, I was just going to send back. Uh, so send back a video. This will take a bit longer because the video is obviously bigger. So it's just been uploaded from my disk to this browser, and it's now being sent across to the computer. Um, here we go, and I can. It's just done. Really. It's can play that. Okay. Uh, you can send. There's other type. You can send other types of file, and it, you know, they can be downloaded by the user. Some emojis. Uh, right. Now I'm going to create a group chat. So. And just wait a second for that to. Yes, we do. I see, and then I can <clears throat> add participants. So I'm going to add Alice, and I'm going to add Homer, and Bobby, and Hamish. Um, right now, I'm going to send. I've, got, I've actually also got a session with uh, Simon as Homer. Um, so we can send a message from Matt to these two, to Alice and Homer. Hello, in my group. So you can see Alice has received that straight away. Um, and Homer's received it. Let's send it back from Alice. Uh, it's taking a little longer for Homer at the moment. It's still establishing a WebRTC connection with him to this browser. But that, as you've seen, that's now instant, instantaneous, so that's, um, that's now being established. And as you can see, you could have more than one you know, user typing. Um, okay, so that's about it, really. There's, actually, there's one last thing I want to talk about. Uh, typical for a demo, it, it, it's not fully working. Well, it's not working at the moment, but I'll, I'll still, still maybe worth showing you because it's quite an exciting feature. Um, so if I go to direct chat, you can also send cycles to users across, you know, using the messaging app. And let me give, just give you some background on that. Cycles are similar to gas in Ethereum and are used to pay for IC resources, individual resources down to the CPU instruction and byte of memory. As such, the basic unit of um, cycles is in trillions or T for short. So as developers of the IC, we'll need to hold a wallet of cycles to pay for the running of the app. There's a long story around voting tokens, token economics, and cycles, which I don't have time to go into. But long story short, any users can also buy uh, IC or open chat tokens, which can be converted into cycles, and will also potentially be gifting tokens to early adopters. Uh, so, yeah, so users can have cycles of uh, wallets with cycles, a balance of cycles. Um, in this case, Matt's got 10 T, 10 trillion cycles. I'm going to send couple of tea cycles to Alice, but you kind of get the idea. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks for that.